Okay, what we have here is a brand new um, GXV2 box. It's a marine enclosure for some of the significant changes that we made this year. We've reduced the mounting depth of the entire pod. Very often in a marine environment, you're dealing with a, a bar across the top and the pod's going to hang down from below. The problem in a tall guy like me on the boat, when the pod comes down too low, so one of the things that we focused on when developing this was to reduce that mounting depth. So we're going to develop an entirely new clamping mechanism that's extremely versatile. It comes seven different diameters that you can use for virtually any pipe that you might want to work with. Additionally, there's two options in the speaker choice. One uses our MX770. It's a 7.7 inch diameter uh, speaker with a smaller tweeter. And then what you have here is our M770, which uses a larger diameter tweeter and better power handling. So you have those two options for it, as well as different color choices. What's really kind of special about it is it's very compact in terms of its mounting depth this way. And there's lots of flexibility in the way that the speaker mounts, which you cannot see in the video, unfortunately. Is beneath this mounting frame, there's 96 different holes that you can actually use to index the speaker to make the logo look good no matter how you mount it anywhere on the boat. Similarly, on the back of the, the, the pod, the logo comes separately. It comes with the product, but it's uh, attached separately so you can rotate this to make sure it looks good in the application. The best part about it, however, is that they're more aggressively priced than any of the previous products that we've lost. Jay Alonio came out with our marine products a number of years ago. Uh, the, the normal size speaker that was used was a six and a half inch speaker. But Jay Alonio is a very strange company. We do things differently with pretty much everything we do. We realized that in a marine environment, the open air nature of the, of the boat is very noisy. So in order to overcome the noise, we wanted to use a larger diameter speaker to get a little bit more amplitude. So we introduced a 7.7 inch speaker, which was strange. But apparently people liked it because many people are now making 7.7 inch speakers. So let's see if they continue to follow us down the rabbit hole when we introduce the 8.8, 8.8 inch diameter speaker. Now it seems a little odd to simply go to 8.8, but there's a really good reason. One reason that I really like is a single 8.8 inch coaxial speaker has the same piston area as two six and a halves. And what's really special about this is it's got incredible excursion capability, which means it can move a lot further than most normal coaxial speakers. When you combine the large piston area and the incredible excursion, you're looking at about a 60 dB output advantage versus our 7.7 inch speaker. So it's not just a, a random choice of size, it's an actual calculated one that makes a big difference in performance. So when you take a look at a massive speaker like this with excursion that rivals some of our subwoofers, I'll point out, you wind up with a very capable product. The low frequency content capability goes down to about 38 cycles. So although you still want to use a subwoofer, in some cases you'll be surprised what you can get from an 8.8. We'll take a look at the back of the speakers here. Behind this casing here is all the crossover components in the sealed chamber, and all the connections are made right here on the bottom, making for a nice clean installation. So if you've got the room for an 8.8, .8, definitely something to be considered for your boat. Okay, so what we have here is uh, it's a revision of an old classic. It's our, our Slash Amplifier version 3. Slash Amplifiers are amazing in their reliability and performance and longevity. Uh, although, an old model and, uh, at heart, it's a completely revamped this year. Um, the main difference on this particular amplifier is our 300 slash 4, V3, uh, is the black color. Uh, this, it's amazing the, the resilience this product has had. Um, despite introducing new products like our XD, our HD, and our JX amplifiers, customers continue to look to the slash amplifier for some of the best of the units of reliability, as well as feature set. So the 300 slash 4 continues on, now in its new black form, but we have made some changes to the larger monoblock amplifiers. Fans of JL Audio amplifiers may remember the 1000 slash 1v2 and the 500 slash 1v2. Now with the new V3s, we've made some minor changes. There's been improvements in technology and MOSFET devices, and as well as power supply design, and we've taken advantage of those advancements and changed the outputs to get about 20% more power from each one of these. So gone is 1000, and in comes a 1200. Gone is a 500, and in comes a 600 watt mono block. But what's really interesting about this is Despite the form factor being larger than some of our other amplifiers, if you ignore that even just for a moment, if we introduced this as a brand new model, we'd be blown away by the features and it'd be one of the best amps in the business. When you consider the feature set that we have, in addition to a typical uh, variable crossover, both in slope and frequency,
can see. We also have a single band parametric equalizer that uh, has a remote level control for that bass uh, boost. We also have a fully programmable preamp output section as well. This could be high pass, low pass, 12 dB or 24 dB per octave, and fully adjustable completely all the way through. No other amp in our entire lineup has a feature set quite like what you have on Slash V3. So all the design phone factor may be old, with the changes we've made with the two model blocks, remembering this feature and benefit that have always been there, we still have a hell of a home run on our hands. When we introduced the JX amplifiers recently, they immediately became one of our best-selling amplifiers. We have a full line of amplifiers. We have a two-channel, a four-channel, and we have three mono blocks. One of those mono blocks is going away. The 500 slash one is going to give way to the brand new JX 500 one slash one. D. Now the D stands for Class D and what we've been able to do is take the performance and, and value of the 500 watt amplifier and compact it down to an amplifier chassis that's 43% smaller than what the other one was. In terms of power output, we haven't lost a single watt. We've just wound up with a much cooler running amplifier that's incredibly compact. It's actually so compact that our marketing guys had some trouble trying to get the, the model name to actually fit on the amplifier itself. So if we could go ahead and zoom in, I want to show you how tiny this amplifier is. You can see that the model is very, the model name is very, very small. And to give you a size reference, this is a 500 watt amplifier that's incredibly compact. So if you have anyone that's interested in getting really incredible performance from an amazingly compact amplifier, the JX501D is going to be an amazing product. It's amazing to think that the W7s have been around for 10 years. And last year we introduced our 10th anniversary edition of the W7s. So the W7 AE anniversary edition. The major changes here are cosmetic enhancements. We made the product look even nicer. The nice finish on the black basket. We've got the, the nice backplate on it. On the front edge we've got a beautiful trim ring and a new logo to go with it. What most people don't realize is that our W6V2s are also now entering their 10th year. But instead of just some cosmetic changes like we did on the W7s, we've made some significant improvements to come out with the W6V3s. The 10 and 12 inch versions that we see here have some significant changes that not only enhance the look, but also the performance of the product. If you take a look at the front, you'll notice there's a nice accent color of silver that kind of accents against the frame of the cone of the speaker itself. Although it just looks like it's cosmetic, it's actually part of the design itself. So if you look at the black dish here, but on the inside you'll notice the silver cone from the back. The sandwich mechanism allows the cone to be incredibly rigid and yet still be lightweight. This particular one, the 10 w 63 has a massive motor structure, by far the largest motor that we can fit on this without taking the terminal and having to relocate it. You'll also notice the black basket to match what we've done with the W7. And you'll also notice a change here on the back plate. The back plate now resembles what the W7 Big Brother has as well. But if you focus in on the very center here, you'll notice that there's a separate part inside. This is a brand new patent that we're working on that dramatically improves the cooling circuit of the speaker. Now, cooling's important for a number of reasons. First First and most obviously is for power handling. If you run too much power, the coil gets too hot, the speaker goes by line. By maintaining that heat at a lower temperature, we can keep the, cool, the, the coil intact, running for more reliable performance. But what most people overlook, and something that's very important to JL Audio, is something called power compression. When you dump a whole bunch of power into a voice coil, it gets hot. And one of the side effects of getting hot is it raises its, its impedance or its resistance. And by doing so, the amount of power you're actually putting in is actually reduced. So the more power you put in, in, the less results you get from the speaker. If you're anything like me and you like to play music loud, that's not something that's acceptable. So by improving the cooling circuit, like with this new patent, we can actually keep the speaker playing at high levels without sacrificing any performance whatsoever. When we take a look at the 12, again, another massive upgrade in terms of the motor. Both of these speakers have about three quarters of an inch of linear excursion capability. That's linear, one-way, actual measurement, not some fantasy. These things are robust, solid performers, definitely the go to speaker for high end. So I hope you guys enjoy what we've got coming for you with the W6V3s. Wow, you know, in the middle of uh, 2011, we got some information regarding our products that was pretty surprising to us. We come to find out that our 10W1V2 was the number one selling subwoofer in the country. It's amazing to us, it also scared the hell out of us. Because what they didn't know when they came out with these results 
was that we were actually planning on replacing that product. So we're stuck with this, this situation. If it's not broke, why fix it? But what we did with the product, I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed. We've made some cosmetic changes, as you can see here with the W1s. We've changed from the silverish cone to a nice black finish that matches some of our other products. But when you turn the speaker around and take a look at the back, it's pretty amazing. Nobody consider that one of our less expensive speakers looks as good as these do. We're using some machining on the back plate as well as the top plate to really enhance the cosmetics of the speaker. But that's not the most important part. The most important part is what we've actually done with the motors themselves. We've made the motors larger and increased the excursion capability by 20% over the old one. So if you like the old one, and apparently you did, you're really going to love what we've done with the new W1 and W3s that we'll be shipping this year. We introduced our C3 component the coaxial speakers a couple of months back in 2011. We came out with a five and a quarter, a six and a half, and a five by seven inch version. But there was one product that was missing that most people overlook. And it's a true six inch speaker, which is a drop in replacement for almost any Japanese vehicle on the market. So a lot of people use an adapter wrench to try to force a six and a half in there. And if you have the time and patience for that, you're welcome to do that and you benefit as a bigger piston. But if not, we now offer the C3 600, which is a drop in for those Japanese vehicles. It was a true six-inch speaker. And some of the features that you may not be aware of on the C3 is the fact that our voicing on this product is different. If you don't know what that means, basically what that is, is the balance of energy between the mid-bass, the mid-range, and high frequency is structured in such a way that these things really pop off of the door. They sound really fantastic, very loud, very capable product, incredibly reliable, and there's also a lot of flexibility built into the product. One of those bits of flexibility has to do with the tweeter. You have the option to either mount the tweeter as a coaxial speaker, or separately, as you can kind of see here, this entire post can be attached to the center of the speaker, but they both still use the same crossover. If you take the close up here of the crossover that we have, all of the models, including the new 600, offer adjustments for the mid range as well as the high frequency driver, so you can fine tune these to whatever your preference is in terms of sound quality. So once you get them in the door, keep access to those crossovers so you can go through and show for your customer or for your own personal taste what you're looking for. It's an excellent product, and I think the 600 will round out the line quite nicely. We introduced the 13 TW5. Everyone was quite surprised at how shallow the mounting depth was. No one thought the speaker could actually perform the way we claimed it would until they actually got the product and listened to it. And it blew people away. If we had any problems with the product, is that no one anticipated that it could move as far as it did. But they were surprised and they got the performance they were looking for. So why change it? Why come out with the version 2? There's a couple reasons. One, it was already pretty shallow. We've increased the mounting depth by about an eighth of an inch, but we've given you 13% more excursion. In other words, we've given you more output potential. In addition to that, the original version had a 3-ohm voice coil, which just made people freak out and not understand what we were doing. We're a different company, and that made it a little bit challenging. But with the new design, what we've come up with, not only have we changed the frame, but we've changed the voice coil configuration. And you can now get the 13 TW5 V2 as a 2-ohm speaker or as a 4-ohm speaker. Make it a little bit easier to choose your amplifier power. It's a wonderful product. In the back here, we've actually changed the cooling circuit to make the speaker run a little bit more efficiently. We don't want you to run extra power to it, but it'll handle the power that you are running to it a lot more effectively now. So the new cosmetics, stronger frame, higher excursion capability, and only an eighth of an inch longer. It still remains the shallowest true subwoofer on the market. I think we really like what we've done with the 13W5 uh, TW5 V2. Thin is in. People are looking for a thin mount woofer so they can fit them in vehicles and places that normally woofers shouldn't go. But we're definitely delivering this year when we introduce our, our TW3 line of subwoofers. It'll be available in a 12 inch as well as a 10 inch. The 12 inch is going to have a mounting depth of only 3.5 inches. The 10 reduces that down to 3 and a quarter inches. There's so much going on with this product, this might be a long video. If you take a look at the back, the first thing you might notice is the fact that it is a dual voice coil cast frame speaker, which at the price point this comes in at is pretty remarkable. You also notice some very shallow mounting depth. But this is using something that's shared from its big brother, the 13 TW5. It uses a patent from Jay Audio called the Concentric 2. The Concentric 2 basically allows us to keep the, the surround and the spider of the speaker further apart to allow for greater stability, even in a shallow mount product like these TW3s. The benefit to you as a consumer is much greater output potential without the risk of, of things rubbing. Now from the front of the speaker, it looks pretty normal. Not. <laughs> It's a very large aluminum dust cap, and if you look at the very edge here, you'll see there's a plastic part as well. These two parts are separate. And I'd like to share with you what's going on inside this product. I'm going to break it here. 
Underneath the aluminum dust cap, you'll see that it's this very intricate series of channels and holes that help flow air through the entire center of the speaker. The aluminum material is chosen to help act as a heat sink to improve the, the heat dissipation of the voice coil. Now if we turn the product around, you can take a look at what's going on the back side here. So you see it's a very substantial coil, multiple layers. You can see the four connections for the dual voice coil option. And you can really see how the cooling circuit is going to work to make the speaker incredibly reliable. If you take a look on the inside edge, you'll see additional uh, holes for an even better venting. What I haven't shared with you yet is the true output potential of this product. Something this thin has no right to have the excursion that it has. Both products have 0.6 inches of linear excursion one direction. In other words, this product has more excursion capability of its bigger W3 version 3 subwoofers from Tail Audio. There's a slight difference in the power handling, so if you've got the room for the larger product, you might want to consider that for power handling purposes. But using a product that's only 3.5 or 3.25 inches deep, we can now put subwoofers with amazing output potential in spots that we never could before. The TW3 is going to be the subwoofer to go to this year, absolutely. JL Audio introduced our WX line of subwoofers. It was our attempt to get into a more aggressive price range. We've been known for making some very high quality subwoofers for many years, but our price point tended to keep us out of reach from some of those earlier customers. The WX's and the WX V2's that have now replaced them have really changed the game. We use the same engineering effort that we do for all of our subwoofers, but now we focus in on how to make the most reliable, best sounding speaker at the lowest possible price point. Any less than this, and it would not be a JL Audio woofer. So this year what we're introducing is a new 8 WX to go along with the 10 and 12 inch and 15 inch version of the WX product. This thing is an amazing product. Our head engineer, our CEO and founder, Lucio Crony, has this fondness for 8 inch drivers that is it's bordering on uh, obsession. But he really focuses in on making sure that our 8s do a really good job at some base. So now customers that are in a uh, budget price point that still want great performance from a small driver, they have an advantage of an 8 WX V2. Looking forward to seeing the ship by the second quarter of this year. Many years ago, J. Lodeo came up with a category that we call Stealth Box. As the name implies, these Stealth Boxes blend into the interior of the vehicle and give amazing sub-base performance in these very special cars that we chose. And in the early days, the biggest complaint that we had about them was, how come you don't make way for my car? Well, over the years, we've grown to offer more than 300 different options in Stealth Boxes. And this year, we'll be introducing several more as we go throughout the year. The best place to go to find the most recent ones will be, of course, jlodeo.com. Uh, the whole listing of the figure vehicle will have it. If you don't find what you're looking for, let us know. It might be in the pipe. We might already be working on it. We always want to know what you're interested in. What I really want to talk about this year is a new concept that we have. We're calling it Stealth Mod. It takes the concept of Stealth Box to the next logical level. Of course, everybody wants some base performance in their vehicle. That's obvious. That's easy. If you're lucky enough to have a vehicle targeted by Stealth Box, that's a great place to start. But if you're only focused on the sub base, you're really robbing yourself of about 80% of the music. There's only two octaves are really covered by your subwoofer. So what we opted to do is come up with an entire package system built around the concept of the Stealth Box, like the one you see here for the Camaro, but comes with every single accessory necessary to do a complete installation of not just the Stealth Box, but the door speakers, the amplifier, and everything. We actually even take capacitors and various components to use the factory speakers and get more performance out of them. Now one thing that makes it very hard for us as Tail Audio is the research required to do these products the right way. The reason for that is we pre-cut and pre-terminate all wire. We custom make each one of the brackets to mount the amplifier in the exact vehicle. I'll be honest with you, this is sort of a test idea. We think it's a great one, but we want to make sure that you, as our consumers, are ready and happy about this. So we've targeted three vehicles. We targeted the Kia Soul as a more entry level price point. The system that we do is focus around our C2 speakers up front and the stealth box that goes in the back with a um, W0 motor in it. So now what you see here is one from the Camaro, which we have behind you, um, but this is a more midline price point. It comes with the stealth box, the 700 slash 5 amplifier. The C3 component speakers. Um, take a look. These things can also be mounted as co axles if you wanted to. In the car, they're done as uh, uh, if you wanted to mount as co axles now. We also offer one for a BMW X5, which would be a lot more expensive vehicle. That's for the premium sound system version. These are the first three. We're also going to be looking at doing one in maybe like a Ford F150 or some other you know, sport utility vehicle. And we're testing. We're seeing what's, what's interesting, what's appealing to people. Now, whichever one seems to work, we'll 
going to continue to go down that path. We think things like stealth mode make a lot of sense. The best part about it is once it's installed, it disappears in the car until you turn on your factory system. It's no longer factory. It's a full, high quality JLR sound system without taking up any space at all. JLR has always been known for making fantastic subwoofers and subwoofer enclosures. We know about our stealth box products, so you know about our fiberglass products. Unfortunately, the price points tend to be a little high for some customers, so of course we need to continue with wood enclosure. And this year, focused around our GW3 subwoofers, we have four new models that I'd like to introduce for you. The first one that you see over here is for the 12 GW3. Now it looks like a pretty compact enclosure, but what you can see is actually how shallow it is. It's a very, very shallow enclosure, taking advantage of the TW3's very shallow mounting depth. And if you need a size reference, it's about as shallow as an iPhone. So if you need to see if it'll fit, pull out your phone, check it out. We also offer it in the 10 inch version, same mounting depth. There's two other versions designed for pickup trucks, like you see here, which would allow for the angle of the seat, both for the 10 inch as well as for the 12 inch version. Our best selling enclosure, without a doubt, both the number of dollars and number of units, has been the CPU 108 LG. This thing is now being called the Microsub. It's a name from our past, that's something you may remember. This Microsub, most people, when we tell them it's an 8 inch subwoofer, say, ah, we don't like 8s, we only like bigger woofers. We just smile and say, go ahead and play it. Just listen to it. It is a ported enclosure that uses a very special porting mechanism in it. What most people don't realize about the CP 108 is that the woofer that's in it is our AW3 version 3. And when Lucio Aponi, our CEO and head engineer, when he was developing that product, he was also developing the enclosure itself. So as he made changes to the woofer, he also made changes to the enclosure. If he had to change the enclosure, he changed the woofer. And in the end, what you wound up with is by far the best possible enclosure design for that AW3. And apparently people seem to like it because they buy a whole lot of them and they're very happy with the performance. The only way to get this thing to be any better is to double it up. So this year we're introducing our CP208. You'll notice it's ported on this side as well as this side, but it's not quite twice as wide as a single woofer. We're taking advantage of using a brace in the center to divide the enclosure so it'll fit in in most applications. For the record, I have one of these in my car. You can take it from me with my cold dead hands. So. It's a fantastic enclosure. But if those are just too big for you, here's a new enclosure called the CP106 LG. The Microsoft with a single 6W3 is a ported enclosure. If you don't have room for this, you're out of luck, man. This is about as compact of an enclosure as you're going to find anywhere. And the performance, second only to that CP108. This thing is an amazing enclosure. If you've got a bit more room to work with, both in your budget and in your vehicle, you might want to consider one of our HO enclosures. We've changed these for the W7s to complement the anniversary edition look. This used to be a red carpeted material, it's now a black carpeted material. And this year we've also incorporated our logo on the top to really make it stand out so people know that you're paying for the best. This does feature our W7 AE subwoofers, which are our highest level, best performing subwoofer. In terms of output, they're known as high output enclosures or HL enclosures. And the reason for that is a patented design that has a vented system that loads into this front chamber and then into the vehicle. So it gives you the absolute best sub bass performance in any application you can fit it in. It. Absolutely dynamite enclosure. If you've got these, I strongly recommend one of these HL enclosures.